Austin Matthews has started the 23-24 season on an absolute tear. Good look on this third power play. Now Martyr in front. Matthews scores. It's number 300. One to get within one of Tavares. Matthews scores. Nylander intercepts. Across. Valadella scores. It's a hat-trick on opening night. Getting it back to Matthews. This historic performance tied a handful of other NHL greats for the most consecutive hat tricks to open up a season. Alex Ovechkin would open up the 2017-18 season with two consecutive hat tricks, 100 years after the last time it was accomplished by the remaining three players in the same season. Those being Joe Malone, Cy Dennity, and Reg Noble in the 1917-18 season, the NHL's first year of existence. Matthews goal scoring, however, reminded me of a story we told a few years ago, back when the channel first began, of a player who did what no NHLer has ever been able to accomplish. But the way I covered his story wasn't fully in depth, and I figured now would be the perfect time to do his story justice. I'm talking about the hockey phenom, who recorded not one, not two, but three consecutive hat tricks in three consecutive games. The man they called in Minnesota, Mr. Hockey. Locker, long lead at center ice, onside, Spihar! What a mark! He scores! This is Dave Spihar, and he was all the buzz in 1995. High school hockey is huge in Minnesota, as stadiums to the yearly tournament are just as packed as your average Minnesota Wild game. Almost every year, clips will go viral from the games, and in the state, it's the talk of the town. Homegrown talents are special, and to have potential in a state like Minnesota makes you basically hockey royalty in their eyes. So when Dave Spihar put on the performance of his life, the hype for him was through the roof. Spihar was a known goal scorer during his time at Duluth East. His freshman and sophomore year in Duluth saw him post respectable numbers, with a 25 goal season as a freshman and a 29 goal 56 point season as a sophomore. But it was his junior year that truly put Spihar on the map, a year that would see him and the Greyhounds reach new heights. Spihar's jump from a sophomore to a junior saw his on ice performance skyrocket. He doubled his point totals from the year prior, racking up 102 points and scoring 58 goals. This massive spike in his performance drew more eyes on the young forward as he and his Greyhounds were set to compete in that year's state tournament. Up to this point, it's been over 30 years since the Greyhounds won a state championship, but they were close. In fact, the year prior, they fell just short of making the championship game. The team was building something special, however, and have shown that they were a team capable of winning the tournament. All they needed was a hero, someone who could step up when needed, to bury those crucial goals. The Greyhounds' first round opponent was three-time defending champion Bloomington Jefferson. This was no easy opponent, but Spihar would step up to the plate, starting his legendary three-game stretch of dominance. Line once again. Locker long lead at center ice on side. Spihar! What a mark! He scores! One east break. Spihar in over the line. Fires a goal! What a move by Spihar. Clarity with the interception. He's got a man. Duluth East would take down Jefferson thanks to Spihar's hat-trick performance, winning the game in a 5-0 shutout. The following matchup was against Edina, and this game would showcase Spihar's ability to maneuver and score through tight areas. Many expected him to score, but instead, he made hats fly once again. Gets his 
second hat trick of the tournament. With two incredible games under his belt, Dave and the Greyhounds enter the championship game poised and ready to get their revenge. After just missing out of qualification and losing in the championship game in 1990, this was the organization's chance to win it all. Spihar knew this and would cap off his 1995 state tournament dominance with one last memorable moment. Late in the third, tied 3-3, Moorhead would take a tripping penalty. The person they tripped, Dave Spihar. This is how it went. They're doing it. Maybe I'm just going to stand right here and come out, cut the angle a bit, go back and see what happens. He scores! Well, if you watched him on two breakaways earlier in the tournament, he went to his right. This time he went to his left. The goalie poised he is, and he looks at the goalie to see where he is. What is he going to do? I'll go this way. This penalty shot goal would be the game winner as the Greyhounds would go on to capture their first state championship since 1960. Spihar's legendary tournament would also cement himself in Minnesota high school hockey history. During the tournament and afterwards, sports radio shows all throughout the state were buzzing about Spihar. How do I know this? Well, my dad was actually one of those callers, and he tells me all the time about the legend of Dave Spihar. The following year was Dave's senior year, and he capped it off with yet another 100-point, 50-plus goal season, finishing his illustrious high school hockey career with 166 goals and 304 points. After graduating, he would commit to the University of Minnesota, and during his four years as a Golden Gopher, he would remain a solid player consistently racking up 30 plus point seasons. But his goal scoring pace took a hit, which is to be expected when making the transition from high school to the college level. After his four years in college were up, Spihar was set to become a free agent. And you would think, because of his monumental performance and legendary status, that at least one NHL team would give him a shot right? Sadly, that was never the case, as Spihar would not only fail to get signed, but he wasn't even offered a professional tryout. After the three consecutive hat-tricks, the state championship win, and his four years in college, his professional hockey career would just come to an end. The story of Spihar feels incomplete at first. You would think because of his status that he'd have to be given at least an opportunity, but on the flip side, perhaps he didn't need it. Think about it. Spihar did what many in the NHL strive to do, make a name for themselves. If you mention Spihar's name in the state of Minnesota, at least one person will remember his name. They'll remember all the hype all the goals, and all the comparisons. Dude was getting compared to Brett Hall at age 17. Maybe he didn't need to make the league. Perhaps his story was already complete, because Spihar already accomplished what many dream of, and something no NHLer has ever done before. I was given an ability, but I think I, I way to phrase it as I was given a passion for the game. I've loved it since I was little. I wouldn't come home from the rink, I'd get dinner, lunch brought there, I loved it. Play the game however you want. Just have fun, just have fun. And we did, we played the game like we were at a park.